Today I'm going to show you how to make this really simple picnic blanket. It's only made from fat quarters and it doesn't have to be perfect patchwork. You can make it bigger or smaller if you wanted to. So it could be a play mat or it could even be a little cot blanket. But this picnic blanket comes with four place mats. Make more if you need them. But these place mats have little pockets on the side so that you can put your knives and forks in there to keep them nice and tidy. So we've got four of those and there's a strap which means that when you're not pick it, picnicking or when you're on your way to your picnic you can roll the whole thing up wrap the strap around it thread one loop through the other and now you're portable or when you're not picnicking uh, you can hang this up on the back of your door to to make it easy storage so let's take a look at your finished sizes and the materials that you're going to need and then we'll get sewing. So the first thing we're going to do is to take four of your fat quarters and trim off the selvage if there is one and cut them down to around about 22 inches by 18. That doesn't have to be exact. If your fat quarters are a little bit larger, that's fine. You'll just have a larger picnic blanket. Then measure, again it doesn't need to be exact, but measure around about 9 inches from one side and cut. We're then going to rearrange all of the rectangles and sew them all back together again. So I'm arranging them so I have two of the larger rectangles and two of the narrower rectangles and I'm just joining them alternately. And then fold over right sides together and we're going to sew all four pieces together. So there we have four pieces sewn together in a row. I'll have another four pieces all sewn together in a row and then I'm going to cut down both strips around about 10 inches from one side so I have two more uneven rectangular shaped strips. So I now have four uneven strips which I'm just going to place together trying to avoid two prints the same actually meeting so no two pieces kind of like this so stagger them all slightly it doesn't matter that the points don't meet that makes the the whole um, little quilt so much easier to make up and then I'm simply going to again right sides together sew all these four pieces together So this is how we are looking now, there we go, so I'm going to give this a quick iron and then we'll take the wadding, now I've just used a wool wadding because this is what I happen to have to hand, because I want to give it a little bit of padding and this is going to be quilted. If you have um, some heat reflective uh, wadding or batting maybe that would work um, help to keep whatever you put on there a little bit warmer or cooler maybe my wadding is a little bit bigger than my blanket top and it's it's easier to do that when you're quilting simply because when you start to quilt um, you can move the fabric um, and we don't want the wadding ending up being a little bit shorter than the top of the quilt so if you like you can use a little bit of 505 spray to hold that in place. I don't normally pin with something of this size um, because it's, it's not going to move around. And the best place to start with any quilt is right in the centre as you sew. So I'm going to sew a centre line and all I'm going to do is to sew wavy lines all across. And I've chosen wavy lines because I think it, it matches with my seaside beachy kind of theme. 
if you wanted to, you could cross hatch, which is doing straight lines to make like a box shape or diamond shapes across your quilt. You could stitch in the ditch, which is simply stitching over the top of an existing seam, and you could maybe use a decorative stitch to do that as well. Or you could squiggle all over with three motion embroidery and just stipple it all together. It will need sewing together or quilting in, in some kind of detail because otherwise the whole thing may uh, kind of bag out. So it keeps all, all of the layers together. It keeps the batting nice and secure on the back of your topper. So I'll go and give this a press and start sewing my wavy lines. So I've sewn my lines around about three inches across and the waves are all quite uneven. That's fine. I've also trimmed the edges because as I said, sometimes the fabric or the batting or wadding may move a little bit. So I've trimmed that to make it nice and square. And then I've cut my backing fabric. And again, I'm just using cotton. Uh, but if you wanted to make this waterproof, you could use a laminated fabric on the back. And I'm going to sew this right sides together. So matching up all the raw edges. all the way around the edge but I'm going to leave a turning gap of around about I don't know six inches doesn't have to be exact in one side is to cut across the corners and this cuts down on the amount of bulk in the corners and it makes the points a little bit more pointy and then we'll turn the whole thing the right side out so just push the corners through Bit of a tip for you while I'm just doing this. If you've been sewing with your wadding directly onto your sewing machine, so in other words, no backing fabric, I'd clean your machine out when you've finished uh, the project because you're going to get quite a lot of fluff building up inside there. It's not going to damage the machine, it's just nice to keep it clean. You'll find your stitches are better with a clean machine. So let's pull the whole thing through. and then I'll top stitch around the edge. Oh, push out that corner again. There we go. Right. So that's how we're looking. All I'm going to do is to fold the blanket so that the seam is right on the edge, lengthen the stitch on my sewing machine to about a three to top stitch, and then as I top stitch across the opening, I'll just fold the ends in and sew straight across, and that'll close the opening as I sew. So there's the, the picnic blanket finished. So let's get on with making the placemats and then the strap to tie them all together. So I've cut my fabric pieces to 17 inches by 10 and then I've cut five inches off one side and it's those strips that are going to make the pockets. So for this mat, I've used the contrast beach hut. This is going to be the top of my mat so I'm going to use the beach hut fabric as the pocket to make a contrast. So I'm going to fold this in half and crease. And depending on the way your print goes, I'd normally put the crease down the side here. 
If I want my print to be the right way round this time, then I'll need to put a seam, in fact that can go across the top, we'll need to put a seam down this side and the fold across the top. So these two sides are open. So we'll fold that over wrong sides together and it's this side I needed to sew down. Then we'll turn this through and I'm just going to use a bamboo creaser to point out the point. I'm just going to finger crease it. There you go. And then top stitch just across the top. This then goes onto the top of my placemat in the corner, lining up the edges and I'm just going to sew down this side. And of course these don't just have to be for picnics, you can make these for placemats for Christmas and Christmas fabric would look lovely or birthday placemats if you're having a party. You could even personalise the pockets with initials. So if you're having a party, maybe a children's party, you could even um, let them take them home as their gift. Right, this is going to go on top of my wadding. And again, you could use heat resistant if you prefer. That might pr uh, protect your table if you're going to use these in the home. Like so and cut around the edge and then we'll put the lining on you may find it easier to use a rotary cutter ruler and mat to cut out all of these strips and squares for the whole set um, just remember if you do if you're using particularly wool wadding like this one your rotary cutter can actually push the wool into your cutting mat, so you might have to give that a bit of a clean as well as your sewing machine. Just snip off the final side. Then these two pieces go right sides together and just like, well, you could quilt that if you wanted to, just like with a larger um, sample of your uh, blanket, I'm going to sew all the way around the edge but leave a turning gap so I can turn it the right side out. Then just like with the blanket, I'm going to snip off the corners. Like so. Turn it the right side out. And then top stitch or edge stitch all the way around to give a nice neat finish. So again, I think I'll use my turner just to make those points pointy. Try and avoid using anything sharp to do this with, like your scissors. Because most of the time it'll work. And then one in ten, you just go straight through the corners. And then we'll top stitch all the way around. Again, when you come to the opening, just fold the edges inwards so they meet and sew straight across. And back to the final side and then we're finished. Okay, so 
So I'll just trim off any loose threads. One down, three more to go. And then we'll make up the strap. For the strap, you're going to need one piece of fabric measuring 10 and a half inches by 14 and a half inches. Fold it in half and crease. Open it back out again and then cut a strip of wadding that's going to sit inside the crease but you've got a quarter of an inch less on the raw edge side and I'm just going to secure that in place with a piece with a little spray of 505 so that's how it's going to look for the little straps Take your three inch wide fabric, fold it in half and crease and fold in half again and crease. Got the iron on, you could iron this. To the centre again, crease. Then you fold the whole thing in half and that makes a nice firm strap but you don't need any wadding in it. And then we're going to sew down the open side just to hold that together. Open this out again and you'll need a longer piece of the strap at one end and cut a shorter piece to go at the other end. So we'll need this right side out, we'll trim down the longer end, fold in half and place in the centre of one side here. So you can measure that to make it perfect if you wish but it's quite easy to gauge. So have a pin in here and the shorter piece goes on the opposite end, again right in the centre. And I'll pop a pin in there and then just sew it on the sewing machine so I can take the pin out. So those stitches are quite close to the edge, around about an eighth of an inch. They're just like a, a tacking stitch. And then just like with the placemats and the blanket, we'll turn this over right sides together. Sew all the way around, but leave a turning gap in the side. Only a couple of inches will be fine. So we can turn it the right side out. So make sure you're not trapping the longer strap in your seam. So keep that tuck right out of the way. There's my gap. And across the last side. And just like before, snip across the, cut, the corners, then we'll turn it the right side out. There's the loops. So I just need now to push out those corners again. I'll just give this an iron and then top stitch all the way around the edge and it's finished. So that's all finished. There's my mat 
I'm going to pop the placemats over the top fold it into threes roll it up and then the handle simply threads through the smaller loop and I've all finished. So I hope you've enjoyed the project and I hope you enjoy making yours.